Greenland paddles and recreational kayaks. So I was in the process of working on a couple of other videos and then this question from Daniil came in and I thought it was just such a good topic that could lead us into a couple of other discussions, especially for people that are just getting started. And quick update, I'm finally going to be able to put together my office hours. This is going to be a weekly gathering where I will send a link ahead of time and anybody that wants to join, free form, open questions, half hour to an hour or maybe longer depending on how well the conversation is going each week. Uh, it's going to be different times each time so people in different time zones can join at different times. The two ways to sign up is either shoot me an email and say I want to be added to the office hours mailing list. Uh, you can sign up on my website or you can also sign up at my support coffee page. I will be posting the information there as well. So the Neil's question, they're new to paddling. They recently got themselves uh, a wider recreational kayak. Um, and they've come across Greenland paddles and they want to find out if they could use a Greenland paddle on a recreational kayak. So what I think is great about this question is it's not a matter of can I use this paddle in this particular boat because the answer is yes you can use any paddle I think on almost any boat. The question is more of will it be most efficient? Is it a good idea? Let's go to some of the basics and then decide on what might be best for you. If you happen to have one of these what you notice is that almost all of the surface area for the paddle is at the end of the paddle shaft. Now in a Greenland paddle the blade is actually pretty much the entire paddle as well. You have what's called a loom in the middle and then from here where your hand sits all the way to the end that's your blade. So a big difference in how you use these paddles is you only need to get this much of this paddle in the water to get the most out of the blade. However, for a green paddle to be most efficient, you want to try to get the entire blade in the water. Let's go to cartoons. Okay, so I think this diagram is going to help us show differences between paddle lengths, different types of paddles, and different types of kayaks. So here on the left, this represents a wider recreational kayak. On the right, this is more of, let's say, a sea kayak or any other kayak that happens to be narrower than, let's say, a recreational kayak. Let's go through low angle and high angle paddling. Low angle paddling usually is used for calmer paddles, less energy, less strain, easier on our joints, easier on our bodies. The angle of the shaft is usually kept low. That way it's a little easier on us to paddle. Notice at this angle, the entire blade is in the water and it is a little bit further away from the kayak. If the paddler keeps their hands in the same position from low angle to high angle, look at how much deeper that blade ends up going in the water. So what that means is a lot of times the length of your paddle will be determined by not only your kayak, your body type, but also the type of paddling you want to do. A lot of times more aggressive paddlers will opt for a shorter blade because they know they almost always will be going with high angle paddling. And notice that with a shorter shaft, they still can get their entire blade in the water and it's just at the surface of the water. They don't need to put it in any deeper and they're getting tons of power right next to the kayak. This is usually the case for, let's say, someone that's racing or whitewater paddlers or just paddlers that want lots of power. They'll go for a shorter shaft, but that way they're able to get lots of power right next to the kayak. That also means that you can't really do low angle paddling with a short paddle unless you really push it out of the way. With a recreational kayak, if you notice because of how much wider it is, you don't really get the option of doing high angle paddling because the boat's in the way. So essentially what happens is because of the width of the kayak, you will not be able to get the paddle as close to the boat as let's say in a narrower kayak. That doesn't stop you, it just means that you have to paddle slightly different. And that also means that your paddle shaft will have to be long enough to get the entire blade in the water while you're comfortable overcoming the width of the kayak. And so that's also why it's so important when you're picking a new paddle, to talk to either an outfitter, an instructor, a paddling buddy, someone that can not only tell you what the right size of paddle for your body type is, but also depending on the style of kayak you have. Now let's discuss the Greenland paddle. While the paddle itself is longer, 
the blade surface area ends up just being distributed along a longer, bigger blade. Notice that with the Greenland paddle, it's essentially designed for as narrow a kayak as possible because if your hand is situated right here, to be most efficient, you want to try to get that paddle blade as much of it into the water as possible. Whereas before, it was a lot easier to get your entire blade in the water, even with a shorter shaft. But for a green paddle, in order to get the tire blade in the water, you want to be as close to the kayak as possible. So that's what makes it a little bit tougher to use it in a recreational kayak. So can you use it? Absolutely. You can still get the paddle in the water and it'll be easier on your body. But you're not being as efficient because in order to be efficient with a Greenland paddle, you want to get the entire blade in the water and a wider kayak is just not going to allow you to do that as well. So that's why if you wanted to have a paddle that's a little bit easier on you, you'll often see recreational kayaks along with long shafts and smaller blades at the end. And the reason for that is you can still get the entire blade in the water overcome the width of the kayak and with the blade being a little bit smaller this one will be a little bit easier on you to paddle all day so that's where i think this is a, such an interesting conversation can you use the greenland paddle absolutely is it most efficient no if you wanted to have a greenland paddle because of slightly less power and easier on your body for a recreational kayak maybe going with a slightly smaller blade might be the most efficient option for you I also want to mention that I've seen and paddled with people that have used canoe blades on a kayak and I think it's really awesome to also seeing how they link strokes from side to side or just try to remain on one side and do a lot of the work just on one side with one single blade. You are forced to do that if you're using a canoe blade. Thank you Daniel for your question. I hope that answered it. If anyone has anything to add or if anyone has paddled with different paddles on recreational kayaks and want to share their stories, please comment below. Hope that was helpful. Subscribe if you like. I'm always trying to put these videos out. Don't forget to sign up for the office hours if you'd like. As always, Luke Rory, Guy Gipster. Thank you for watching and see you next time.